As idyllic Vermont towns go, Brattleboro can compete with the best. Brick buildings lining steep hillsides, beautiful green mountains, thick maple syrup, and a real sense of community. But under the surface, something radical is brewing. Well, I'm bringing in the urine that my partner and I are donating. First, I was like, oh, this is totally fine. And then the uh, canister tipped over in the car. And <laughs> luckily, they were here when I got here. And I have a, like a rubber mat in the back. So he was able to wash it off for me and stuff. So there was a couple like, OK, maybe this is a little gross. But I think that the, <laughs> the benefit of it is uh, far outweighs the slight snafus that we've been having. Julia Hampton is one of the 170 volunteers have who have been collecting and donating urine to the Rich Earth Institute in Brattleboro. Founders of the Institute are among the growing number of researchers and concerned citizens who are dissatisfied with our wastewater treatment system. This is pretty funny. Mm -hmm. This isn't what we spend a lot of time doing. <laughs> <laughs> no? Mm -mm. When there was a billion, when there were only a billion people on the planet, our waterways and our environment were, were managing and absorbing and, and handling it. But with seven billion and then this projected nine billion people here, there's not a chance if we don't get this system figured out. Rich Earth Institute wants to reduce the pollution we dump into our rivers, streamline wastewater treatment, and save energy and money in the process. We eat the food and then we excrete and it goes to either a septic system or sewage treatment plant. We either spend a lot of money and resources trying to get those nutrients out of the water before we discharge it, or most sewer plants around here just discharge those nutrients. They treat the, for pathogens, so they discharge the nutrients into the water, which leads to algal blooms in freshwater or in estuaries, and that's a major environmental problem. Algal blooms can suffocate fish and produce toxins that contaminate drinking water. I think that we've created a system with our plumbing where all you have to do is you press a little button and it disappears and you don't have to think about it. It's anti that when you start talking about it and I'm saving it and gonna use it <laughs> or else people are like, that's a little weird. We just want it to disappear. <laughs> I think is important to see the benefits of it and the fact that our body does turn it into something that then can be used in the earth and that this, we are a part of this whole cycle. Using urine as fertilizer is, um, we think is a much better approach than synthetic fertilizer because it's a, it's a sustainably produced, it's already being produced, it's a waste product that we can recycle, repurpose into fertilizer. If you use synthetic fertilizer, nitrogen fertilizer requires natural gas for its production, and that's a non-renewable resource. And the, um, the phosphorus fertilizer is from a mined resource, rock phosphate, and that's a limited resource as well. Abe Noe Hayes was the initial driving force behind finding a use for urine. <laughs> Growing up, my family had a, a dry composting toilet. It was our only toilet. And so I, I got used to that as being a normal thing from when I was little. And it actually wasn't a very great composting toilet. And so once I started learning about compost science and, and uh, got getting into those issues, I redesigned it. And now it works really well. There's no odor, it makes great compost. And that got me really interested in in the idea of improving them, them to the point where they could be more, more of a normal thing to have in a mainstream house. <laughs> sure, <laughs> my life's mission. <laughs> I've always wanted to do something with my work that was both innovative and had a positive effect on the world. I think I have to walk around in circles. And it seems that this urine diversion, urine it's reuse, fine. is something that wasn't really being addressed. It's a, it was a, an obvious an obvious problem with an obvious solution to me, but no one was working on it. When we first started recycling back in the late 70s and early 80s, it was like, okay, we can do something. And then it became very institutionalized and it's, it's just a normal thing to do. This is also at that edge and the vision for the possibilities of this research is huge. This is a dry urine diverting composting toilet and we used to have a flush toilet here 
And what we did was we took that out and we put this, we retrofitted it with this urine diverting system. What's different about this than a regular flush toilet is if you look down in the bowl, it's divided. In the front is like a, a bowl and uh, the urine goes into there into a tube, which goes down to the tank downstairs. A good question. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. Where's the urine go, she said. So um, the urine from the, from the toilet comes down through this pipe, out through the wall to the storage tank. And that's, that's an outdoor tank, a 300 gallon tank. It stays there until we pump the tank out periodically whenever it fills. I have to use a different nozzle for the, for the pee only. We pay for, just like here, we pay for our town sewer. So instead of paying for, what is it, three gallons to five gallons to flush a toilet, to flush a pint of urine, you know, we're, we're collecting it and it's actually being used. I'm about to side dress this little group of plants here with some extra urine. Um, this is our methods development year, so we're, um, we're doing a few different treatments just to make sure that we're within the right range of the amount of urine we're applying and getting the results we expect. The researchers are studying how the pathogens and pharmaceuticals in urine move through the ecosystem. We're pumping water out of the bottom of these tanks, which are lysimeters. They're, they're buried in the ground and full of soil, and they capture all the, all the rainwater that's fallen on it and has traveled through the soil, potentially picking up contaminants. And then we pull it out from the bottom and we can analyze what's in that, in that water. We're sending these samples to the University of Michigan and, uh, and they're analyzing them for biological contaminants for any viruses or bacteria that, um, that may be coming from the urine from the struvite uh, or be naturally occurring in the soil. Yeah, we're gonna ship this. <laughs> the samples in here have been on dry ice, so they go in the freezer. In Ann Arbor, University of Michigan researchers are developing techniques to safely use urine to fertilize food crops and they hope to do it on a broad scale. Some of the urine will be turned into a solid mineral called struvite. Struvite can be transported and applied as pebbles. We stained the urine with cyber gold, so it stains the nucleic acid of anything in the sample. And where you have concentrated nucleic acid, um, you see these bright spots this is from the less than one day old sample. And this is the aged sample. So this one has a very high pH. Uh, so the bacteria that are happy in your body might not be so happy at pH 9. It's a very different environment, which is good news. So this harsh environment should kill lots of things. They've seen that it has killed many bacteria. I want to be part of the solution, right? Uh, I spent a lot of time detecting things that are wrong with our water systems. But this project is really targeting a solution, something that we can do to improve the water quality. If we can get the pharmaceuticals out and the nutrients out sooner, um, then maybe we wouldn't have water bodies that you know, have algal blooms and, and fish kills. Um, there's no doubt that urine can be a safe fertilizer for growing any kind of crop. The question we're trying to answer is, is urine from the whole population taking a whole array of pharmaceuticals, is that safe for unrestricted use in agriculture? But there's no question that, that pure urine itself, from an individual who's not taking pharmaceuticals, um, pure urine is a great fertilizer. I think they got a noble effort going. I think they got a lot of work ahead of them, <laughs> you know, to, mostly to get uh, public acceptance. The, the normal, normal, if you will, <laughs> public person will say, those carrots were grown with pea for fertilizer? No way, you know? And, and I think that's what's got to be overcome by it, you know? I think the future of this is in technologies, is in, is in bathroom fixtures that you just use, toilets you just use, and they're just plumb different. It doesn't have to be a major undertaking. It doesn't have to be a hobby. We've just been trained to feel shame about what comes out of our body. We need to have a healthy sense of fear about those pathogens. We have to have a healthy sense of what could happen if we don't manage these properly. But we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to think about it. Um, and we need to do, to do both. We need to think about it and talk about it.